Hey guys, welcome to my first ever watercolour voiceover video. I have to tell you though right off the bat that this isn't a tutorial video. I've come across a couple of things whilst I've been painting for the last two to three weeks and I wanted to share some things with you. I wanted to talk about one of my recent paintings which is a seascape drawing that I did recently and I wanted to go over some of the tips and tricks warming back into doing landscape paintings again and some of the materials that I used for the painting. Preparing for a painting, even if you haven't done it for a long time or if you're starting out, is just as important. Look at things like Pinterest, Tumblr, even Instagram has loads of amazing photographers on there. Most of all, just look around you and you can find inspiration anywhere from like things you've seen, objects, colour composition, just general storytelling and things that you could use in your own work. The rule of thumb of doing any kind of landscape type of drawing is to start from the background and work your way to the foreground. This sort of rule applies to watercolour, acrylic and oil paintings and any type of gouache that you're using. The basis of understanding this sort of concept is basically the further away an object is, the fainter it is in the distance. So therefore when you build your way to the foreground you're building up the darker layers and making the details a little bit more prominent. But this rule doesn't necessarily apply to all kinds of watercolour landscape drawings. For instance, the one that I've done doesn't really have a background. Everything is dependent on the way the water is and how much of that is a reflection within the pale grey sky. So that's why I started off with the water first, did the rocky hill and then did the sky last to sort of pull everything together and make it succinct. For this piece, I'm using my Fabriano watercolour sketchbook. It's one of my go-to sketchbooks that I have a lot of my landscape pieces in. The quality of the paper is incredibly forgiving when you add layers of colour washes. You can blend tones so naturally and it gives such an even texture. I've used about three brushes for this piece and the first brush that I used was a pure squirrel brush made by Windsor and Newton. They're really great for covering large surfaces. I use it mostly to apply my base tones and it evenly covers surfaces so I'm able to apply my colour on top quite fluidly. Another brush that I love using is my Curatec small watercolour brush. I've recently got that and I'm just in love. It has so many qualities to it and it's so versatile in what I need it for. It has sort of the quality of my squirrel brush and it has the precise tip for detailing like my Escoda brushes. The final brush that I used for this piece is my Escoda Optimo number no. zero brush. It's one of my favorite brushes out of all the Escoda brushes that I have and I can apply very precise detailing and it came in handy when I added the highlights and the shadows to my painting. I made so many mistakes in this piece. I, when I was creating the rocky hill I added too much water on top of the area that I wanted this hill to be in, I applied the paint and the paint just absorbed into the water and it was just a mess. But there's a lot of stuff like that that happens within landscape drawings. Unless you're planning it out perfectly down to a T, then these sorts of abstract mistakes can be used to your advantage. With this piece, the only planning that I really did is I blocked out the sky, I wanted, I had a vague idea of where I wanted the hill and I blocked out the sea and I just focused on those three main areas and making sure that they got the characteristics that I wanted them to have. The only, the, well, the biggest tip that I can give you guys is make sure your darkest areas are dark and your highlights are bright and then pretty much everything sort of falls into place because it's so easy for it to become so wishy-washy. It's so easy to lose definition in all of that sort of brush strokes that you sort of forget that this has to have dimension, it has to have depth, even if it is water, even if it's like a, a sky or something like that. All those little nuances, they need to have their depth and their detail. Otherwise, they just get lost and people won't recognize what it's supposed to be. Hope this video has helped you guys out and if you guys have any comments or questions just drop me a message on Instagram, YouTube or my Facebook and I'd be happy to answer them. 
Thanks so much for watching, guys. Bye.